Hello and welcome back to the PPD YouTube channel folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you for joining us for another exciting edition of the Twinkle Tip Friday video collection. Hey, if you haven't done yet, so we're rather thrilled and excited to say that we're this close to getting to 4,000 subscribers. Please click the like button and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications and subscribe to the PPD YouTube channel. We're really trying to get that number up. Thank you. Let's go ahead and get started with this week's little bit of a lesson. It's going to be on value curves, but it's going to be on creating your own value curves that is using something called the 2D Path Editor. Let's get started. But before we begin, we have two announcements to make, two really big announcements. Number one, if you're going to the Florida Mega Mini, we would like to see you there as well. We're going to be there. And a friend of mine, Barry Wiles from Sequence Solutions, you may know him. He's a great guy. He and I will be teaching a class together at the Florida Mega Mini that's called Map a Sequence Like a Pro, Mapping Like a Pro. So we're going to do a full-length full one day class on mapping, only mapping and nothing but mapping to kind of get you through some of those challenges with mapping. I can make a thousand videos, but to be honest, to get in depth and live with people and to ask questions and to be in the same room with them, you're going to get a great um, perspective from two different people on two different ways perhaps to map or just the synergy between the two of us and the classroom will come up with different things that we probably won't even realize that we're going to talk about. So join us there. The other announcement as you can see behind me we have two awesome PPD t-shirts. One is uh, <laughs> one is over here this is uh, Pixel Me This and this over here is Titans of Twinkle. This is the Pixel Me This shirt. It's a really nice soft material. It's an awesome t-shirt. The other one's a little more cotton um, and, it, and, you, and to get them all you have to do is go to shop, scroll down to the bottom and click on whoop, Swag and Gear. And once you get there, you have two choices of t-shirts to make, the Pixel Me This shirt and the Twinkles of Titan. Um, and we ship these out. If you get, if you get them in by 2 o'clock uh, during the week, uh, they, ship out the next, uh, they ship out the same day by 2 p.m. So uh, there is our exciting announcement for the day. Let's go ahead and get into kind of the, the, where the idea for today's video came from. Uh, I wanted to do... Uh, something on uh, path movement in X lights and uh, how I do those value curves and, and really kind of get to the root of doing some different things uh, that I do accomplish whenever I'm sequencing. So one of the things I did was I wanted to show off how we do 2D path movements in X lights because there's a generator in there. But I wanted to create a generated path that maybe somebody had already figured out. They had like an idea for something. And you can, cr you can just go to Google, and that's what I did. I, I searched images on Google. I found this one right here. I clicked on it. And this is the path that we're going to take into consideration today. And we're going to build this path into X lights. And when we do, what, what we'll do as we do this is you'll see exactly the process to doing it, and then we'll apply it to the effect, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'll do is we're going to go ahead and grab the pinwheel effect. So that would be right here. We'll grab the pinwheel effect. And the reason we're going to use the pinwheel effect is because it has something called an XY axis, something that you can move along on an axis to move the direction or the location of the center of the effect. Now this isn't on every effect but it's on a significant number of them and you can look them up for yourself there's a lot that you can choose from i'm using the pinwheel though and what i'm going to do is i'm going to stop it from moving let's just let's just change the speed to zero there and i'm going to make it a little bit smaller so let's make it a little smaller there we go so the size isn't as big we can make uh let's get rid let's get rid of two arms let's make it two arms there and let's do a little bit thicker so you can see it's a little thicker. And what if we did a little 3D on it? There we go. That looks nice. That looks like a that looks like a two-arm pinwheel. We could do four arms. You could do whatever you want. But just for demonstration purposes, maybe we will knock this up to one. So you'll see it gently spinning in the background back there. Okay. So now we want to gener now we want to know where the center of the effect is. Now we know it's in the center of the model or in the center center of the matrix in this instance. But what is important to know is that you can change the the location of where it's at. 
Now, if you've watched my video on value curves, I'll go ahead and link that up here. It's an older video, but it is still quite relevant to this day. Maybe we'll do an update follow-up video to that. But um, let me know in the comments if you want to see an updated video to value curves. Uh, anyway, you can uh, slide on the X, Y axis here, and you can move this effect wherever you want it to be. And it can be stationary there. So you could say, let's say you could have, you could have the pinwheel effect here, and then you could make another one and put it somewhere else. So you could have multiple pinwheels on your screen doing the pinwheel, right? Um, but what if you wanted it to move into a certain path or a certain direction? You can do that also as well by opening up the tools menu and going into the generate 2D path. And this is the 2D path editor right here. And I'm going to make him really big. And the 2D path editor has um, a little bit of the... Um, how do I say this? A little bit of the properties of the custom model dialog box, and it also has some of the properties of the sketch effect. Uh, and, and you'll see that here as we go. If you haven't watched my video on the sketch effect, you can watch that up here too, or just search the channel. You'll find it. Um, but th the 2D path was uh, uh, generator was created so that I didn't have to come up with math to figure out, it, well, it comes up with a math for me and creates the path, but I used to have to, if I wanted my model to go into a certain specific location during a certain point in time in a sequence, it was a little harder to get it to do that uh, because I had to think about it because I had to coordinate the X value curve and the Y value curve between the two to make them so that they actually perform the way that I wanted them to. So. The 2D path generator was, was created. What we can do is I've downloaded, I've, I've created a copy of the image that we're going to uh, go in and create. We'll go into my uh, draw images here, and here's the path. And this is the same path, just so you're aware. This is the exact same path here that we found on the internet. And all we're going to do now is we're going to generate this 2D path here. And the first thing that you need to know is the blue, the light blue, and if you're colorblind, forgive me, but the, it's the one on the bottom left. You need to drag that to your start point. Now, I've already identified the start point as the circle. This is where it's going to come up. And this going, the path that we're going to take it on is we're going to go up and then down squiggly back here to the top big round circle and then a little loop-de-loop -loop, and we're going to come up this way and we're going to go back this way and we're going to end right where we began. Now to do that we're going to place our second point right about here and there's no, this is unlike, unfortunately this isn't like um, this isn't like the, uh, the the sketch effect where you can uh, click with the shift key and double click and it adds extra points where we can kind of make it curve right here. So we have to double click and we have to create our curve point like so. Now once we get around the curve, we can just keep going and keep filling this in. And I'm gonna just gonna I'm gonna fast forward through this so that you can see me as I do this. All right, and there we are. We just have a basic path. You can see that there was a time where I could do just a straight long shot there. And the, the longer but still curved areas, I just put a couple points in there so that you would still get that gradual curve that's kind of there. Uh, and then again here, I hit this and, and I went all the way across there because that was way more of a straight line. But again, if you want to go back for perfection, you certainly can try. You can start over again. But if you want to generate the... the um, value curves for this, all we have to do now is click the generate button. And once we do, it will give us this screen here. And you can see that uh, earlier I had I had done a test run just to make sure that I could do this path and it worked. Um, but I, I can actually uh, create a value curve. I'm going to call this TTF uh, V2, we'll say, that's V1, V2. And so what what Xlights does is it saves this as two different files. I'm giving it one file name, but it generates two files, an X path and a Y path, and you can see that thanks to the name of the file that is created. So we'll go ahead and save it. This one will be TTF version 2. It'll be very similar to this one. And we'll go ahead and save. So uh, now that this is generated, we can click the close button. 
and we can now begin applying the value curves. We, have, we know we have two value curves that we can apply to this. We click on the value curve button here. We can go to our load button because that's the first thing you're going to have to do. And we go to version 2x. This is for the x value curve or the x-axis. We'll go ahead and click OK for that one. And then for the y, we'll go ahead and hit the load and we'll hit on we'll select the TTF V2Y. So now we'll go ahead and click OK. And then as you can see, it's kind of zipping there around. Let's go ahead and pull over our path that we were generating here. It, the goal was to show you that you could look up a path that you wanted something to go in, or if you wanted to create your own path, you know what direction you want it to go. You can generate this 2D path curve and generate the value curves on your own. So you can see here, it's, uh, well, this is really flying. Do you know how you can slow this down? You stretch it out. And so whenever you stretch it out, now it's going real slow. And I can demonstrate for you, it's going up and then over the top and then a loop-de-loop -loop, and then coming back over this way. And now it's coming down, 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 down and curving back up to the very beginning. And it looks like it's starting over again. So that is something that I thought is very interesting like you can you can come in here let's go ahead and open up the uh, layer setting box and if we copy this let's go ahead and copy and we'll paste it we can come down here to transformation and we can rotate this 180 degrees and if you want to get you want to uh, do a little bit of fancy footwork here we can go to the uh, speed and change this to five so these are kind of spinning around there a little bit and doing their thing and you can see they're going at it. They're they're really having a they're having a blast, right? So you can see them flipping around. They're going against each other. They're just kind of doing that little basic movement and so forth. And generally, just a little bit of fun to have with the effects. Now you can also do this, also do this with a number of other effects. Now the other effect that I will recommend trying is the ripple effect. Now I know the ripple effect may not be that exciting or anything. Let's see if we can change it though. So maybe it is a little bit more. And we'll go ahead and change this to uh, solid both. And then thanks to the new version of Ripple, we can change our scale. And we can set our scale at a certain size. Boom. Let's see. That looks good right there. So now we can apply, thanks to the uh, 2D Path Editor, we can go ahead and apply our uh, value curves, which are right here. This is the X1. See, if, see, it's hard for me to point this out, but if you read the tooltip, hover over top of this, when you add those new value curves, you can read the tooltip and it says TTF path 1X. So the X, which it just disappeared there. This is the X version. We'll go ahead and load it. And then this is the Y version. We'll go ahead and click on it and load it. And so now you can see, here's the ripple effect doing the exact same doggone thing as what the pinwheel had been doing. So we can do the same thing here. We can copy and paste. We can go ahead and rotate this 180 degrees or however you want to do it. And you can see very clearly that you have two objects going in that path that you've given it. It just, it's really interesting. It's just something special that you can add into your programming. You can find ways to utilize the 2D path and the, and the value curves. but. I, more importantly, it's just something to up your game and to have a little bit of fun and to create things in X Lights. I mean, let's let's face it, to do something special in X Lights, it really takes a little bit of time. I don't sequence a song in 20 minutes or an hour or three hours. I spend 60 hours sequencing a song. And it's little things like this that cause me to take a little bit longer than normal to sequence a song because I'm always trying to generate something new, create something exciting. So well, that's everything I have for you guys today. I hope this video was helpful, informative, and taught you something new about x lights that maybe you hadn't learned just yet. If you liked the video, please give us a huge thumbs up. If you haven't done yet, so hit the subscribe button. We are just this far away from 4,000 subscribers, and it would be great to have you, yes, you, right along with us on the journey here on YouTube and with the PPD community. Guys, that's everything from me. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. Don't forget, we have the uh, the class coming up at the Florida Mega Mini. We'd love to see you there. And if you want cool t-shirts just like these, click on pixelprodisplays.com and check out our gears. It is there and you can order them. We'll send them out. Thank you for joining us again this week. This is Clyde signing out. We will see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye for now.